Good evening everyone and welcome to Ultimate NFL, an Australian take on the happenings in American football week to week. To take us through week 14 action is my co-host, the man from Sacramento, Steve Salisbury. Nick, a pleasure to be here. Week 14, we've got three weeks left until the playoffs begin. This is the business end of the season, the pointy end as they like to call it. Great action on the weekend, good stuff the next few weeks. Let's get into it. Well, it all started on Thursday night football. Let's look at the results. Dallas got over the top of the Cowboys, and Tony Romo was solid, but DeMarco Murray was the man again. Tell you what, the Cowboys are a good football team. Tony Romo's having the best year of his career. He's got a good offensive line in front of him. He can always count on DeMarco Murray. Good win by the Cowboys on the road. And the Cowboys looking for their first appearance in playoffs for five years. So. Certainly been a little while since they've been in there. The Carolina Panthers got the job done against the Saints, and Cam Newton really impressed you. I thought Cam played great. You're going into New Orleans, which is a division foe. That's a tough place to play. They absolutely blasted the Saints, and Cam had a great game. Redskins were really poor. We're going to touch on their game later. And the Giants, they snapped a seven-game skid over the Tennessee Titans. A couple of really interesting results here too. Jets and Minnesota went to overtime. It was Teddy Bridgewater who had the 87-yard touchdown reception to right to win the game. Yeah, the Jets are a bad team and they proved it to us all again this weekend. <laughs> Colts trailed 21-7 in the third term. It was hard work for him, but your man got the job done late. Andrew Luck, no matter how badly he plays, the first 45 minutes of a game, you put the ball in his hands, when it counts, he's going to get it done for you most times. How good is he? I think he's the best in the NFL right now. I really best do. NFL now. I do. I think he's got all the tools. You may not see it from week to week. He probably wants to get the consistency, but he's a great player. Well, from a Colts fan, that is good to hear. Detroit Lions, they were too good for Tampa Bay. And Pittsburgh, important win for them over Cincinnati. To go in to play a divisional foe as they did on the, on the uh, weekend and get the win is impressive. Here you got Andy Dalton and AJ Dalton, Green. AJ Green setting up, they're into the red zone, setting up a, a potential score here for the Bengals. You can't defend this either. Just straight over the top to Gresham. And you love tight ends, don't you? Tight ends are the most underrated players in the league. They can block, they can catch the ball. They're fabulous. I love this bit of play here. Andy Dalton. That is not Russell Wilson, no. That is Andy Dalton. The read action, straight up the middle for the touchdown. I'll tell you what, Pittsburgh had no idea that was coming. They were clearly <laughs> fooled on that one. I don't think anyone did. And uh, Big Ben, well, you can see here why he's one of the best. And I'll tell you what, Martavius Bryant, he's one of the best rookie wide receivers going around. You know what? The, the Pittsburgh Steelers, time and time again, nail it with guys like this. No one knew who Martavius Bryant was when he came in the league, and look at him here. And Le'Veon Bell had another huge game. He uh, showed us why here two rushing touchdowns and one receiving touchdown. Le'Veon, Ball, Le'Veon Bell may be one of the most underrated players in the league. He gets it done week after week. And the Texans got the job done as well. They had a solid win. I'll tell you what, Denver Broncos, uh, they got the job done in the end, but Peyton Manning's streak of 51 games with a touchdown throw, that was broken. It's not that surprising because Buffalo, while underrated, is a good defensive football team. Peyton Manning, not the player he once was, I'm not that surprised that Buffalo was able to keep him out of the end zone. And CJ Anderson, he was very good again and becoming a really important player for them. The Cardinals got the job done against Kansas City. Karen Williams rushed for 100 yards two days after being elevated from the Arizona practice squad. So certainly a big couple of days for him. And Baltimore, they were just too good for Miami in the end. Baltimore's a good football team. They needed to get this win to secure their spot, at least in the standings, as the wild card team. They've done that. You look at Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco is one of the most unflappable quarterbacks in the league. Time and time, time and time again, he does it. It doesn't matter if the weather's cold, if the weather's hot. It doesn't matter if he's at home or he's on the road. He's the type of guy who you can always count on when it counts. And this guy here, Justin Forsett, we saw him go in for a rushing touchdown there, and this bit of play here was really important to get that first down. I was really worried about how their running game was going to look when Ray Ross went out suspended, but he's certainly been really impressive. You're absolutely right, Nick. A lot of people were worried about it in the, the organization themselves, and Justin Forsett has stepped up. He's done a great job. And he obviously helped his team get the win. I don't know, this one's going to hurt you, mate. Derek Carr threw for three touchdowns. Oakland 1-11, and knocked off your 49ers. Yeah, the 49ers season cannot end soon enough at this point, Nick. It's really bad. New England, the 12th straight 10-win season. So it's the second longest run streak in NFL history. So doing very well with Brady behind there. And Edelman, are really, again, really important. Edelman, really important. But the thing that people aren't looking at is it wasn't so much the offense that got the Patriots the win this weekend. It was their defense. And that's the thing about it, is if you have a good defense, you can play late into the season. The difference between this Patriot team and past Patriot teams, 
they've got a formidable defense, and I think they're going to be a factor when, it, when it's all said and done. And Atlanta and Green Bay was a cracking game today. But Seattle, they got the job done in Philadelphia. Seattle is the type of team that they can go. They play well in cold weather, warm weather. They run the ball. they got a great defense. Their defense is fabulous today. They've got this quarterback, Russell Wilson, one of the most underrated players in the game. So you're not getting value for money for him, about oh, 600000 a year. Yeah, they, they're basically getting him for free, and he won a Super Bowl for him last year. Here he is again, hitting Marshawn Lynch out of the backfield. Nobody within five yards of Lynch. He scores a touchdown. I think we're barracking for Mark Sanchez, aren't we? Like, we know how hard it was for him for the Jets. He looked so good when he was young, but <laughs> unfortunately it didn't work out. Good touchdown pass there to Zach Ertz. He's playing with a much better, a much better offensive system, so he's going to have a better time with Philly than he did with the Jets. Marcus Baldwin here getting another receiving touchdown for Russell Wilson. And D right, Doug Baldwin, another undrafted free agent, actually played for Jim Harbaugh in college. And then if you have a look at Sanchez here, he went for the win, uh, so you can't blame him for that, but in the end, picked off again and was just too much for him. Jenkins with the interception, that, and that was the ball game. That Seattle defense is very, very good, and the reason that they're in the position they are, they've been one of the best teams in the NFL for three years running, has everything to do with that defense. And looking at the Australians that played on the weekend, there was just the one. We're on wing watch. Bradley Wing, he was very good too. 47 and a half yards across six punts. That's pretty good, a very good average. He hit one for 74 yards. Do you think you can take it 74 yards? After the break, we tackle the weekend's fantasy results and look forward to what week 15 has in store. Welcome back to Ultimate NFL. It's time now to look at the fantasy results from the weekend and some really impressive performances, starting with Cam Newton, who had 35 points for three pass touchdowns, one rushing touchdown. He was very good. Cam was good. Matt Ryan, though, his team's going to be behind in just about every game, so expect him to air it out a lot and score a lot of points for you. Russell Wilson was solid, but Aaron Rodgers, as always, scoring 27 points. Looking at the running backs now, Le'Veon Bell, well, three touchdowns, one receiving, two rushing, 41 points. Best game of the weekend by Bell. I'll tell you what, DeMarco Murray, most consistent performer on that list. He's going to get the ball a lot from the Cowboys. He's going to score you a lot of points as well. CJ Anderson would expect him to keep scoring with Peyton struggling a little bit. Looking <laughs> at the wide receivers, Julio Jones, well, he was on the receiving end from those Matt Ryan passes and almost got the points done, but for fantasy people out there, they loved his game with 31.9 points. I love A.J. Green. I've had him on three teams in a row, and he has delivered for me just about every week the last three seasons. Megatron again sold with 21 points. Looking at the tight ends, I know they're your favorite player. Jared Cook, two touchdowns. He got 18 points. I worked with a tight end back in the States and he, he converted me, but I like Gronkowski. Gronkowski's the X factor for the Patriots. He's very difficult to defend with that size and that ability to catch the ball. Looking at the kickers, Josh Brown had a massive game. Five field goals. One of them was a 50-plus. He was 58 yarder, <laughs> so he was very good. And into the defense, New York Giants. Eight sacks and one touchdown, so they were very, very good. But for everyone out there watching, what they want to know, Steve, is the waiver wire. Who do they need to pick up this week? I've got it for you. I've got real value for you. The first player I want you to pick up is Jeremy Hill. He's a running back for the Bengals, and the Bengals are playing the Browns. The Browns are atrocious. This guy <laughs> could have a 300-yard game. And to make matters more interesting, a couple weeks ago, he actually bad-mouthed the Browns' defense in the press. So they're going to want to put it to him, and he's going to want to pay them back. So he's certainly got to step up, doesn't he? He has to step up. So I like him. Teddy Bridgewater is a quarterback for the Vikings. He had a really good game on the weekend. He's got two straight 300-yard games. That's two straight. He doesn't do that very often. They're playing Detroit. Detroit will probably overlook these guys. I think Bridgewater's going to have a big game, so I pick him up. And finally, Julian Edelman. After the tight end, the one position that gets the ball the most in the Patriots offense is the slot receiver. Julian Edelman's your guy. He had 141 yards, I think, on the weekend against San Diego. I expect him to have a big game on the weekend. Julian Edelman, Teddy Bridgewater, and Jeremy Hill are the three guys I'm picking up. Are you worried, though, with Edelman that they share the ball around too much so that this week he had 141, but next week he might have zero? That, again, is something that could happen, but when you look at it, traditionally, this team throws to the tight end, they throw to the slot receiver, so whoever plays in that position is going to get some touches. Well, there you are. They're the ones you've got to go and pick up, but there's also going to be a huge week for the following guys. Tell us the three players who you expect to have monster weeks. I expect a huge week from Odell Beckham. Odell Beckham, to me, may be the best wide receiver in the NFL right now. They're playing the Redskins. The Redskins are awful. Maybe the worst defense in the NFL. Odell Beckham can catch anything, and he's going to have a great thing. I also like Des Bryant. Des Bryant plays with 
the Dallas Cowboys. A couple weeks ago, the Eagles, who they're playing this weekend, held them to 70, held him to 73 yards. I expect Dez to have a big weekend. And he wants to get paid too. He's still out of contract, so Dez, we know what he's like. He certainly wants his money. Dez likes his money, and I expect Dez to have a good, a good game. The last person I want is Drew Brees. I expect Drew Brees to go off on the weekend. He plays very well under the lights. They're playing at home against Chicago, who doesn't have a good defense. Traditionally, the Bears have a good defense. This year, they don't. The Saints love to throw the football, so I expect Drew Brees to have a great game. Maybe. Odell Beckham, Des Bryant, Drew Brees. Those are your three guys that are going to go off. So if you haven't got them, go and trade for them. Now for your tweets at ultimate underscore NFL. The first one, should I take the risk on Tony Romo with the worries over his back from Kimison underscore 92? Kimison underscore 92, I don't think there's a risk with Tony Romo. He's having the best year of his career for two reasons. He's settled in to the role, actually three reasons. He's settled in, he's got a good running back behind him and a great offensive line in front of him. I think he's one of the most assured players there is in the NFL. I think he's a guarantee. Even with that back injury? I don't worry about the back injury anymore because he's not being asked to do too much. There, Everybody at this time of the year is playing with an injury. They've certainly got a really good offensive line there. Second one, do you think Peyton is finished? His stats certainly show that he might be from Jay McQuillan underscore man. Tell me it isn't so. I'd love to tell you it isn't so, but I do think the guy's finished. I, I, you look at him early in the season, and he had more zip on his passes than he does now. You look at games from one, weeks one through four, and you look at games... 12, 13, he's not the same player. I think that has everything to do with the fact that he's older, he has coming, he's coming off four neck surgeries, and he's just not the player he once was. Physically, he's not the same player, and I think that his, the end is near for him. Well, there is a rumor that he has got a quad injury, so maybe that would mean he can't push off as much when lose a bit of power. And I want to ask you though about CJ Anderson. With him playing so well, if he can continue that form, does that mean it's gonna open up for Peyton? It should open up opportunities for Peyton, but again, my fear, you may be right about the quad injury, my fear is that even if he has the opportunities to throw the ball, that he's not going to be able to get the ball to the receivers that he wants. After the break, we're going to look at Fast Five. Welcome back to Ultimate NFL. It's time now for Fast Five, where we tackle five of the big issues. And I'll tell you what, this first one, mate, is close to your heart. The 49ers lost to the Raiders. <laughs> Nick, this is the most painful game I've ever watched. The 49ers went into Oakland. Played a 1-11 team. The Niners are coming off a really bad game on Thanksgiving where they were beaten and actually embarrassed on their home field by Seattle. What a team does is they have professional pride. Come out and put a good effort forth. They didn't do this against the Raiders. Conversely, the Raiders were, got beat, they were beaten last week 52 to nothing. There would have been so many different things that the 49ers could have seen on film that they could have exploited. Did they exploit any of them? No, they did not. What happened is David Carr or Derek Carr exploited the 49ers. It was uninspiring, it was insipid, it was unwatchable. They've got a much more talented roster, maybe one of the most talented rosters in the NFL, yet they put that kind of garbage out on Sundays. It's, it's unacceptable. I want to ask you about your quarterback, Colin Kaepernick. Is he the man to lead them out of this? No, he's not. Because what I've seen from Colin this year, he has regressed. He came out and, and early in the piece, people didn't know who he was or how he played. So he was able to catch people off guard. What people have seen now is that he's very limited. He's the type of player who wants to get out and run, and what the team has done is they've tried to keep him in, in the uh, pocket. So I, in addition to just the style issue, I don't think he has the smarts to be an NFL quarterback. He worries too much about the periphery things. He's worried about what's being said about him on, on social media when he should be focusing on the matter at hand, like guys like Tom Brady, Drew Brees, and Andrew Luck do. Now, Ray Rice suspension, only two weeks for punching his fiance in the head. I'll tell you what, mate, I think Roger Goodell really missed the mark on this one. Probably Roger Goodell's biggest whiff as commissioner of the NFL. How you allow a guy who punched a woman in the head and knocked her out to play another game in the NFL ever is beyond me. But he did it. It's only two weeks. So whether or not he comes back and plays is a different story. But Roger Goodell has whiffed here. If I smoke pot as an NFL player, I get four weeks like that. Yet if I punch a woman in the face, I get two weeks. I it think, makes no sense. I think the other issue here too is for all the NFL women out there who actually support the game and love the game and take away their kids every single weekend, what sort of message does that send? Oh, it, may, it sends a terrible message. It sends a terrible message to women. It sends a terrible message to young people watching. It sends a terrible message to anybody who ever thought about doing that. The idea that that is acceptable is essentially what the NFL is saying, and it's not acceptable. Not good enough. Moving on to the NFC South, I'll tell you what, this must be a worry for the NFL. Both teams, the Falcons and the Saints, on top at 5-8. and eight. 
And the Saints and Falcons aren't even the best team in that division. It's not Tampa Bay. I think it's Carolina. This is bad because what happens is if you win the division, you automatically get a home playoff game. So what would happen right now is a team that could be 7-9 and nine could host, say, Seattle or San Francisco in a playoff game. That makes no sense. My solution is this. Forget that a home team, that, sorry, forget that a division team gets a home game automatically. Just seed one through six, one through six or one through seven, or one through eight, however many teams you have in the league. That way you ensure that you get the top eight teams playing in the tournament. Do you think the Saints or Atlanta right now could actually have an impact on um, playoffs time? I don't. I don't think either team can. I do think Carolina can because of their defense, and I think that, that Cam Newton can create issues for uh, different teams. Moving on in the Redskins quarterback situation, this just gets worse and worse. RJ3 was benched for the second time this season. Colt McCoy went in, he had 199 yards, two interceptions, so it didn't get any better. No, it didn't get any better, and it's not going to get better for the Redskins. The Redskins are atrocious. They made a mistake by picking RG3 in the first place. He's not big enough, and unfortunately what's happened since he's got into the league is we've realized that he kind of, he's come in with sort of an entitled attitude. He has actually lost a lot of the players in the locker room, and when you're a quarterback and you lose the, the confidence of the guys in the locker room with you, you're, on a, you're, a, you're in serious strife. So what's the answer for them? Is it, do they go to Kirk Cousins or what do they do? Do they stick with McCoy? Well, I, I think this season is a wash. If I'm the Redskins, I'm starting to look toward the future. Do I have anybody on the roster who can actually help my team? And if I do, I give that guy some time. Now, beast mode. We don't know how much more we're going to see of that in Seattle. He hasn't got a contract. Is this a worry for Seattle, the fact that he's still out of contract? I don't think it's a worry because we're still in the season. If we were at the end of the season, say June or July of next year, and he didn't have a contract and he, weren't, and he wasn't going to show up to, to training camp, then we'd have an issue. The Redskins, or sorry, the Seahawks are, are taking a look at him. He's probably doing what he's supposed to do every single day, and I'm sure that his agent in the background is putting together the facts and the figures to say, to, you know, to put a compelling case in front of the Seahawks to say, this is a guy that you want long term. I'm not worried about it whatsoever. Do you think because he is a different unit and the fact that he doesn't like to do media and he does all these skittles and all that type of thing, do you think that that might be turning them off to think, well, just maybe he might actually go backwards at some stage? Well, what we've seen in the past is that we will tolerate the NFL teams, NBA teams will tolerate a guy who's a little bit skew if if he, get, if he gives results on the field. To this point, nobody's given more results on the field than Marshawn Lynch, so I don't think they're turned off that, by that in the least. Now looking forward to preview week 15. Some great games coming up, and most of them are live on 7 Mate, so free to air TV. Make sure you get on and have a look. The first one, although on paper it doesn't look great Friday morning, the Cardinals versus the Rams, I think it's going to be a defensive struggle, and I think it's an absolute belter. I think this is going to be a great game. I don't know why anyone wouldn't think it's going to be a good game. You've got two division teams going at it. The Rams are a lot better than the record indicates, and the Cardinals are a playoff team. And Jacksonville, they go to Baltimore 5 a.m. Monday morning on 7 Mate. I mean, it's a huge one for the Ravens, isn't it? It's a big one for the Ravens. The Ravens, like we talked about earlier, are on their way to getting into the playoffs. They need this game, absolutely. They're going to want to continue the momentum that they've started. And on Monday morning, of course, Sunday football over there in the States, but Dallas Cowboys versus the Eagles. I think this will be the match that ran 11 a.m. on 7 May. Oh, this absolutely, in my mind, will be the best game of the weekend. You've got Tony Romo going into Philadelphia. They had a big game a couple weeks ago. Cowboys need this win badly if they're going to take this division. I expect this to be a great football game. And the New Orleans Saints, they go to Chicago on Tuesday to wrap up the round. They do, and I'll tell you what, Chicago's a difficult place to play, but I do think that the Saints can go in there and beat them because... At this point in time, the Bears are not a good football team. Now for this week's betting update, here is Lauren with all the latest odds. Thanks, Maxi. Let's start with Thursday night football as the Arizona Cardinals take on the St. Louis Rams at Edward Jones Dome. The cards are the favourite in this one at $1.60, while there's money to be made if the Rams can cause an upset as they're paying $2.90. Next, we move to Sunday Night Football for a classic rivalry as the Dallas Cowboys take on the Philadelphia Eagles at Lincoln Financial Field. The Cowboys are the favourite in this one at $2.20, while the home team is paying $2.70. Lastly, we have the New Orleans Saints travelling to Soldier Field to take on the Chicago Bears for Monday Night Football. This should be a huge game. With the current form of the Saints, their favourites at $2.10, some good money can be made if the home team can come away with an upset as the Bears are paying $3.10. Good luck and gamble responsibly. Brought to you by CrownBet. Thanks Lauren. Now it's time for Charity Bet where every weekend we have $100 each to bet. 
Make-A-Wish Foundation is my charity. SIDS is yours, Steve. And I'll tell you what, mate, you have some ground to make up. I'm giving you a hiding. I do, you are. And I'll tell you what, I've got the game that's going to get me back into the ball game. The 49ers are going into Seattle this weekend. The 49ers are not a good team. Seattle is. The Seattle Seahawks do not like the 49ers. And they're going to want to put a beating on them. And I expect them to do that. The Niners are a seven-point underdog. I don't think they can keep this game within 14 points. I'm going Seattle all the way. So your $100 straight on the head? Yep. Absolutely. Done. For me, I'm having my $100 on the Patriots into the Lions at home. I think both those teams will get the job done. That's all we have time for on Ultimate NFL. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next week.